The squad after their thrashing at the hands of Germany. It's Switzerland tomorrow. Here's the captain, Andy Robertson. Saturday morning, but we gave the lads till night time to get over it and then we moved on because, you know, in tournament football, you have our next game round the corner. And we want to we want to try and show up the way we believe that we can, the way we believe that Scotland can play. And, you know, I don't think we've done that the other night. So we need to try and do that. We need to try and play to our strengths and, um, you know, try and play a lot better than what we did in pretty much every area um, because I think, you know, we know we didn't do our best in all positions on, on Friday and, you know, hopefully that's different come tomorrow night. Andy, um, spoken really openly the other day at the press conference. He was the one who said, you know, I want to be the one to talk to everyone after it. Um, he spoke about his role and he said trying to give you guys too much information. Um, have you noticed a change in that over the last couple of days? And do you feel super clear on, on what it is you need to do against Switzerland? Yeah, look, I think everyone assessed themselves probably after that game. And maybe the gaffer was a bit harsh on himself. I think, yeah, OK, if he believes it gave us too much information. But I believe the information was clear. And I just think... Um, you know, maybe the occasion got to a couple of us, maybe just some of us didn't have our best games, but I just don't think we went to the pitch and and done what we've done to get here. And I think that was the disappointing from a player's point of view. Now, the manager and his coaches will also analyse themselves and see what maybe they could have done better. But from a player's point of view, we had to look at ourselves. And that's, I think everyone done that. I think everyone took that day on Saturday to look at them own selves, not pointing fingers at anyone else. And I think we all done that and came to a better place for it. And, you know, come Saturday night, we had a meeting on it. And then, you know, Sunday we were good to go and kind of move on from it and try and look ahead to this game. Because, look, it's a fantastic tournament to play in. We've worked so hard to get here and we want to enjoy it as much as we can. But the only way by doing that is by playing the football that we believe that we can play. And we didn't do that Friday night and... Now we've got, you know, two more chances to do that to, to try and stay in this tournament. Andy and Dave from Radio Clyde. Just in terms of, of the game tomorrow, obviously there's pressure, especially when you're at a tournament like this, but do you feel there's there's more pressure on the team given what happened on Friday and the fact that you probably need a result? Or do you think it's the other way? There's less pressure given the scale of the result. Perhaps you can play with, with more freedom. What, what do you think? Um, I think... We know what we have to do. We know what we have to do differently. Um, but yeah, I think probably, you know, maybe people on the outside didn't hold much hope for us anyway. And, um, you know, maybe that took even more of a knock on Friday. But we have we have a firm belief in our squad that, that, that we have quality within and we can, we can do the things that we didn't do on Friday night. And, you know, if we do that, then we become a better team. And we showed that in qualifying campaign. And that's that's what we need to get back to. That's what we've been working on. And um, we worked on it before the Germany game as well. But I do think there was two sides to the Friday night. I think the big part was we didn't show up properly. But I also thought we'd seen a very, very good team perform at the highest level in front of their home fans opening their tournament. And I think it was always going to... It was always going to be difficult for us, but I think we made it even more difficult for us by not showing up the way that, you know, we expected to. And I think that's why the result was what it was. But we can't dwell on it. We have to move on from it now. And um, we've got another game around the corner, and that's what's good about this tournament, the game. You don't have to wait too long. And, um, yeah, hopefully tomorrow night, you know, people see the Scotland that we believe in. And, um, and if we do that, then that gives us the best possible chance for, for a positive result. Shanley from Sky Sports. Andy, how much is it tomorrow about mentality and how much is it about game plan? And also, can you tell us a bit about your leadership role and what you've had to do in the last few days to pick the boys up? Yeah, like I said, I, you know, I said to all the lads, I said I would give them till Saturday dinner time to get over any disappointment they felt, any anger, any whatever they were feeling at that time. And then it was time to move on. It was time to draw a line under it. And, you know, obviously the manager had a meeting of stuff that we, we didn't do so well and stuff that we had to improve on. And he gave the same message after that meeting of, OK, we've done it. We've said what we had to say. We had a couple of discussions around, you know, certain clips and things like that. And, you know, we always have the discussions and they were had. And then it was time to draw a line under it because, you know, we can't dwell on it for, t for too long. We've got two massive games now in this group and we know we have to do better. And um, that was what our full focus was on come Sunday morning. But... It's important that you analyse it. It's important you see what you've done wrong and it's important that that's pointed out to you and it was in a very clear way. And, and then we moved on from it and we tried to correct that on the pitch on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And, um, you know, hopefully we can show that tomorrow night. Andy, Ronnie Esplin, PA. 
from the highs of the results and performances against Spain and Norway, what's been missing, would you think, needs to be found again? Um, I think we just have to get back to being us. I think, I don't think we've been ourselves, um, you know, we definitely weren't ourselves on Friday and we need to realise what what got us the results in the past and what was, you know, what we were good at when we went to the pitch because the message off the pitch hasn't changed. It's just on the pitch, we maybe probably have to get back to doing that, you know, trusting ourselves within the game, trusting each other, who's ever's next to you. Um, and, and if we do that, then we're a better team for it. And I think you've seen that in abundance in the in the qualifying campaign. You know, you've seen a team that was full of belief and ready to fight for each other and ready to go for, for every single ball. And maybe, maybe on Friday we played a, a wee bit with fear, which we didn't want, but look, it's easy to talk about it. It's harder to put in place. And, you know, it's not an easy game opening the tournament against the host country, I'll tell you that. But we had enough experience on the pitch where we should have maybe have done better. And I think we all know that. And I think the whole country know that. But like I says, I don't want to keep bringing up Friday because now we're looking forward. We don't want to look back too much. We want to look forward. We've got a big game coming up tomorrow night, which we're all excited about. And we want to show, you know, this tournament, what Scotland are all about. And, and like I says, if we do that, then I believe that's the best way that we can get a result. Andy, let's say um, no football ever, footballer ever says they play for a draw. But, but how do you balance the fact that a point might actually be OK out of this game tomorrow with the fact that three points would actually put us in a really strong position and, and you know, completely banish the memory of, of Friday night? It's not really been discussed with us, to be honest, because we've had we've had too much to probably discuss from um, Friday night. But it's. It's about us showing up as a performance level, and I think that was always that's always the way we've done it. We believe that if we perform on the day and whoever the opponent we're playing, then that gives us the best possible chance to to get a win or to get a draw or whatever the result needs to be. But I think that comes down to game management within the game. I think you see how the game's going, and then you kind of make the decisions of you know all of us experienced players, also the manager with maybe the subs he makes and things like that. Of okay, are we you know are we in a position to settle for a draw? Are we in a position to go for the win? Do we need to get back in the game? And and I think that just happens on the night naturally. But you know whatever results or whatever hasn't been discussed, it's all about being performance levels. It's all about okay, how do we get? How do we make everything better? Because, you know, we can improve on pretty much everything we did on Friday night and we can improve it by quite a bit. And if we do that, then then like I says, it will give us the best possible chance to to be together, to be to get three points, to get one point, whatever that may be on the night. But we have to focus on performance levels, we have to raise them from Friday night and we have to show that we're a lot better than that. And if we do that, then you know, hopefully that's enough to get a result, whichever that may be. Uh, Scott Mullen, BBC Scotland. Andy, uh, Andy, you said mentioned the word fear there in the performance on Friday. Does that surprise you, given the experience of yourself and a lot of the other players in the squad now have at club level and also international level? And how sure are you that though, that nervousness or fear is out of the system going into tomorrow night? Yeah, look, I think um, in terms of probably especially the first 10 minutes against Germany, I think they surprised us a little bit. I think, you know, there was quite a lot of balls in behind and, and things like that. And they kind of... You know, we discussed that they pushed their back line back, which meant then we were too deep. It meant the midfield had to be too deep. It meant Shea was up there isolated on his own and we weren't good enough on the ball, so we couldn't catch a break with it either and we couldn't quite build ourselves into the game up the pitch. And and when you do that against a really good team, you're just waiting to really get punished because they had so much quality on the pitch that night that, you know, when they were in front of goal, they were pretty clinical as well. So... It was difficult, but you can never tell how the game's going to go until you're actually in there. And, and, and trust me, we tried. We tried to sort it out on the pitch. We were There was discussions going on and things, but at the end of the day, when you don't have the ball and you can't quite get up to them and you've got a player like Tony Crowes who's just dictating the game, it's very, it's very hard to get then on top of them. And then, look, everything kind of just unravelled, getting a sent off penalty just before half-time. And, um, you know, second half, I thought the lads dug really deep. It wasn't pretty because we were one man less, but... I thought we defended as a unit, we defended strong and yes, we couldn't quite get up the pitch, but it was going to be difficult with 11 men, never mind 10. And But the damage was already done in the first half and it was just about trying to survive in the second half. And, you know, we'd done that to an extent, but, um, you know, the scoreline wasn't good enough and we know that. And, um, you know, that's what we definitely want to improve. 
Good evening, Florian Ratz, uh, Top Media. Um, the Hungarian coach admitted that he was surprised by Morat Jokin because the Swiss coach played differently that, than he used to play before. How do you expect the Swiss? Do you even think you can prepare the match? Will they play like they played in the qualification? Will they play like against Hungary? How do you expect them? Because we don't know Swiss media. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the, the way they tweaked the system, I don't think it was a radical change, but there was, there was definitely a little tweak in, in the system and how they used certain players within that system. Whether they, they used that specifically for the Hungarians or, or whether they've got something up their sleeve for us, we, we won't know until we get to the pitch. So we have to be prepared for anything. We have to be as, as well prepared as we can be. We think we are. Kerrigan? Uh, can we just check your um, your team news? Who's who's fit? Who's not? And uh, also, can we expect changes tomorrow? I know you're not going to give me your team much as I would love you to, but can we expect changes tomorrow in personnel? Everyone fit and available. Obviously, Ryan Portis doesn't play, so you can expect at least one change. Any more, any more than that? At least one. Uh, any other questions from the Swiss media? Come on, Ronnie. Steve, could just ask you about Ryan Portis and that, the two-game ban. What was your thoughts on that? I haven't really got any. He's suspended. I, I covered this on, on Sunday. If we can just this gentleman here, please. Uh... Steve Etienne Wiegema from Switzerland as well. Can you compare Tony Kroos and Granit Xhaka, or is Tony Kroos one or more levels above him? You try to get him into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and I listen, uh, two very similar players, similar in, in, in terms of the style of play, how they dictate the or control the game for the team. So we understood that Tony Kroos was a key player for Germany. We didn't handle him very well. So we know that Granit Xhaka is a key player for Switzerland and hopefully we handle him a little bit better. <laughs>